Hi, this is John Root from Perceptual, and I'm going to give today a very quick overview on the Colorado AI Act and talk a little bit about how our clients are working towards compliance. This is me. I'm founder and president at Perceptual. Perceptual provides compliance services for the emerging regulation of AI. We work with both the developers of AI systems, um, particularly on the vendor side, as well as deployers. And since, and since 2022, we've worked with dozens of customers um, from $100 billion plus global conglomerates all the way to startups. The Colorado AI Act um, is kind of what we what we tend to call it in the industry. Officially, it's SB 24205, um, passed this year, 2024, and it goes into effect in February of 2026. The penalty for noncompliance um, is defined as deceptive trade practices. Um, basically, the Colorado Attorney General has the right to, to file suit um, to against against violators, and it applies to both the developers and the deployers of AI systems. So if you are creating a product with AI in-house, and we'll talk a little bit more about specifically um, what AI applications this covers, or if you're using those same AI applications, the law applies to you. There is a limited exemption for, um, for users of AI systems with less than 50 employees. And we'll talk pretty extensively about what the law requires, but fundamentally it's the installation of a pretty extensive risk management program with lots of documentation. And the ultimate goal of the law is to prevent what they call algorithmic discrimination. So what AI systems are covered? Um, in short, the law covers AI systems that make what it calls consequential decisions in any of these, those following areas that you see there. So education, employment, financial uh, or lending, government services, healthcare, housing, insurance, legal services. And for those of us who have been working on AI regulation previously, you may note that those really closely mirror the defined high risk applications in the EU AI Act. So there's lots of different applications for AI and the ones that the law is concerned about are those on the list. So let's talk again very briefly at a high level as to how to comply. So don't read all this, right? This is a complete list of all the documentation. And we use this kind of, uh, this kind of stuff internally um, for designers of AI products. Now for deployers, there's actually a pretty similar list. Believe it or not, it's longer because in addition to um, all of the other stuff, there's also requirements for consumer facing transparency for the users or the deployers of AI systems. So let's boil that down, right? So here's a more manageable discussion about, about what was on the previous two slides. So what do you actually have to do? So first of all, you're responsible as either a deployer um, or, uh, or a developer for installation of a risk management system. And what is a risk management system? Well, we could talk quite a bit about that, but very fundamentally, the risk management system is a governance document that goes through um, how you're treating uh, AI, what is your algorithm for, how is it developed, what data are you using, et cetera, et cetera. And it, go it goes into quite a bit of detail in the law itself. Secondly, a document a strategy for pre preventing algorithmic discrimination. Again, we talked about that's kind of the, um, the, the impetus for this particular law. Third, an impact statement for the use of AI. Fundamentally, an impact statement is um, a survey of all the different stakeholders who the algorithm might affect from you know, employees of the developer to consumers to governments to the environment, etc. Third, a discussion of data privacy and data security um, with a special focus in the AI context on the use and collection of training data. Training data is really big. And then for deployers, we mentioned this previously, proactive consumer transparency. So all the regulations now um, have some sort of provision about how we have to communicate to, to the end user, the actual person using the AI systems, that a system is in place. Oftentimes there's opt-out requirements. So Stepping back a little bit from Colorado, uh, clients come to us and they say there's all these new laws all over the world, not just national laws, but you know, here in the US state laws, even municipal laws. Like, How do we begin to think through our compliance strategy for all of that combined? Well, there's some good news and bad news. And the good news is what we've seen over the last year or so is that most of the new laws, including Colorado, are starting to coalesce around some international standards. Um, the big three, as I consider them, are here, are here on the Venn diagram. So the EU AI Act, the United States NIST um, AI RMF, we'll talk more about that, and then ISO 42001. ISO, if you've, if you've done, you know, or, or in your organization done ISO 27001 for data security governance, um, ISO 42001 is for AI management systems. 
So what we see of the, uh, in those three global initiatives is um, they're going to require sort of a, a pretty overlapping set of materials. You see that on the right there. So risk classification, um, establishment of quality management system, which we had already talked about, impact studies, technical documentation, and controls around data, right? So when you think back to what we just said about Colorado, that's the same stuff, right? Um, so it's actually easier than you might think in the sense that starting to put in place the pieces to follow one or more of these global standards is going to get you compliance for Colorado um, and is going to put you on the right journey to getting compliance in other jurisdictions as well. In the U.S. particularly, there's not likely to be, you know, much substantial federal legislation. So in that vacuum, instead, we see the states stepping in. So Colorado is first, um, but California and New York are likely to follow with pretty similar legislation over the next couple of years. Um, it's still under review, right? So it could still take a couple, a number of different um, different paths, but fundamentally, um, we'll see this be a state's issue. But when the states start to coalesce around a standard, and, and Colorado being first, right, um, that makes it a little bit easier to think through how do we actually comply. So again, a big wall of text that I don't expect or want you to read, but this is uh, that's a direct quote from the Calif from the Colorado legislation, excuse me, that talks about how if the if the deployer or the developer puts into place um, standards that are uh, that are compliant with the NIST RMF or with ISO 42K, um, that they're assumed that they have affirm an affirmative defense in the in the language of the law that they're compliant, right? So the Colorado law is really clear. It's not that this is all new stuff and you have to do all this stuff just for Colorado. Um, I, I think quite generously they've been specific and said, look, if you're following one of the other global standards, um, you're assumed to be compliant in Colorado as well. So for our clients, it's not an issue of let's track let's track 55 laws like all over and, and see what what's happening in you know in 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 Egypt and in Argentina whatever. It's more about there's going to be this emerging standard. Let's start to put in the piece to follow the standards. So this is a uh, one section, one article of what's required by the EU AI Act. Again, don't read all this. It's very, very extensive. Um, and this is the kind of stuff that, especially in uh, you know, a mid-sized organization, um, these are very onerous requirements to follow. What we do at Perceptual is that we try to make this as easy as possible. I don't think it's possible to really just automate AI compliance. People talk about that all the time. I don't think it's possible because you're creating real policy for your organization. And the organization has to actually agree on the policy and then go do it. But we do the best thing. So we have a highly templatized process where we're able, able to ask um, from our clients a standardized set of questions. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But from that standardized set, set of, uh, of questions and data requirements, we put the pieces together to work in a cross standard way. Our focus is really on compliance. So most of our clients want to know that compliance is, is, is being handled, that they're, that they're doing the right thing. And then they want to get back to building and they want to get back to selling. Our, your clients need this box checked, you need this box checked, and we do it very effectively, very efficiently, and as quickly as possible. One, is, one special word on vendors, and again, vendors uh, meaning in this context, the creators of these AI systems. And I don't mean like open AI, right? I mean, you know, an, an HR startup that does, uh, that does resume sorting, for, for example. The Colorado regulation has, as we've talked about, compliance requirements for both vendors um, and deployers. But what we've seen from our clients is that their customers, right, the deployers, are now asking them, the designers, um, for this documentation. And it makes perfect sense, right? If there's a new law, the question is who, who who's going to take on the burden of compliance? Um, and the you know the, the end user has to do something too, but the deployers are going to have to put a lot of stuff together. So in my mind, um, the deployers are going to expect from the vendors, really airtight vendor compliance, easily digestible handoff documentation. So remember, most of the folks who you know we're selling to, if, if we're selling into HR, or finance, or marketing or whatever, um, are not going to be uh, you know Stanford PhDs in, in artificial intelligence. I'm not either. So we need to make sure that we're talking about this in plain English that our customers can understand. And I think that also pre-drafted consumer transparency is going to be really important. I think that overall, um, deployers are going to ask developers to do as much of this work as possible. It's happening today, so we should be prepared for it. 
When we walk our customers through this process, first of all, it's not a quick process. It's three to six months. And it's not, you know, everyone working around the clock over those three to six months. It's kind of uh, bouncing drafts back and forth that takes most of this time. So first of all, we're assessing risk. So is it the case that your use of AI is going to fall under one of those categories, those high risk categories we covered previously? Second of all, we're going to send a pretty detailed request for information and data that all goes to our secure um, portal and we start to analyze that. And when we analyze that, we then send back a list of uh, mitigation measures or remediation steps. So I've yet to work with a client that had 100% of the required documentation, 100% of the right processes for all these regulations, right? That's not expected, right? And that's our jobs to say, like, here are the things that we need to do um, to make sure that we're following the standards. Then finally, we produce all those reports, right? So all those screens full of text, um, we produce the right documentation um, to, to make sure that we've checked all those boxes. Um, we try to really hard to work in a templatized manner across different standards. So uh, I, I really don't like having to having to work like just with NIST, right? And that's not kind of what we like to do with our clients. Instead, we say, okay, let's take NIST and we're going to hit that 100%. We're going to make sure we are fully in compliance. But as we do that, we want to make sure that that's mapping really cleanly onto EU AI Act as far as we can, because that's still in process. Um, and we, we make sure that it maps as cleanly as we can to ISO 42K1. So if our clients do end up getting the certification audit um, for ISO, that they've done 95% of the work already. All right, that's my brief overview. Um, I hope that's helpful. We'd love to hear from you. Please fill out the contact form on this page or you can email me directly, john at perceptual.com. Thanks.